Hi friends, welcome to biologyexamsforyou.com. Today the topic of our discussion is Class 11th Chapter 1 The Living World, The Characteristics of Living Organisms That short topic we'll be discussing in detail. So starting with why biology is an amazing science. So this is the first video that is aimed at students of plus two level. So before going right into the topic, as a student who is in deep love with biology, just want to say something about this beautiful science. Think a moment about the diversity of life forms around you. The different types of birds that is flying, the different types of fishes that is swimming, the different types of butterflies that is fluttering around, the different types of ants that is marching around. Isn't it amazing? But the most interesting fact is from bacteria, which we cannot see with our naked eyes, to blue whale, the largest organism, the receipt or the chemical or the building blocks, it is the same. The chemicals like carbohydrates, proteins, nucleic acids, lipids, etc. All these things makes bacteria and also human beings and also the blue whale. Think of the diversity that these common chemicals make. Isn't it amazing? Now take the case of ourselves. We are 7 billion people, more than 7 billion people. According to the recent studies, Human Genome Project, we are 99.9% .9 same in genetic makeup in DNA. Think of the difference that we are having within our family, within a country, within a region, around the globe. That 0.1% of DNA is making all these differences. Can you imagine the power of that code, that DNA, that makes all these manifestations? Biology is an amazing science. It's all about the science of life. It's all about understanding ourselves. Now we have a chance to learn this beautiful subject. Take it as a blessing. As a request in the beginning, whatever you learn, learn deep. That's it. If you have a better understanding, you can feel the pleasure of learning. You can enjoy learning. You can feel the confidence of understanding. That will take you forward. Moving into the topic. What is living? What are the characteristics of living organisms? Number one, growth. The ability to grow. Growth simply means it is increase in size, increase in mass, or increase in number of individuals in the case of unicellular organisms. But it's not a unique feature. As you all know, mountains can grow, even sand dunes can grow. But remember in that case, in the case of non-living things, it is by the addition of chemicals or minerals from outside. But in the case of living organisms, this growth occurs from inside by cell division. That's the basic difference. Second characteristic is reproduction. In the case of multicellular organisms like humans and higher animals and plants, there is sexual reproduction where the egg and the sperm that is from mother and father fuses to form a zygote later develops to embryo and later forms a child and that grows and that cycle continues. In the case of plants also there are male and female reproductive structures forming male gamete and female gamete that fuses to form a zygote later develops into a seed and that seed germinates to form the new plant. In the case of unicellular organisms there are asexual means. This is a mushroom, you can see this is a mushroom, the spores are released and that is dispersed by wind to faraway places on falling on suitable substratum it germinates. Whereas in the case of bacteria, it can divide by binary fission, so every 10 to 20 minutes can form thousands of bacteria within a day. Think about the curd formation, the bacteria is lactobacillus. Then in some cases like in planaria, hydra, starfish etc fragmentation is a method of reproduction where the body gets fragmented and each fragment can give rise to a new individual in the case of unicellular organism the term growth and reproduction is used synonymously both represent the same thing often but there are some exceptions this is also not a defining feature of 
living organisms. Take this case, male donkey and female horse mates to form mule. Mule is actually infertile, but remember it's living. Then sterile worker bees, then infertile human couples all are living, but cannot reproduce. So there are some exceptions also. Moving into the third feature that is metabolism. Think about cellular respiration that involves glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport chain, hundreds of enzymes. Think about photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Hundreds of enzymes are involved. This is just a case of two reactions. So there are hundreds of thousands of reactions that is going on within a cell. The sum total of all chemical reactions that is occurring in our body is termed as metabolism. So non-living things do not show metabolism. So metabolism is a typical feature of living organisms. And the reason for metabolism is the presence of cellular organization. Within this compartment, everything is happening. Thousands of chemical reactions are happening within these compartments or called as cell. And the fourth one is ability to sense and respond to environment. So take the case of the plant. The plant's tomato will open in accordance with the temperature. Then there is etiolation or growth of plants in accordance with sunlight. Then oxygen and carbon dioxide release from stomata. It depends on sunlight. So plants can respond to environment stimulus like temperature, water, etc. Whereas in the case of uh, human beings, we sense environment through our senses. All organisms can respond to the changes in the environment. So therefore consciousness or ability to respond to environment is a defining property of living organisms where non-living organism doesn't have this property. And among organisms, human being is the only organism that is having self-consciousness. In summary, the first two features that is growth and reproduction and the third and fourth feature that is metabolism and ability to respond to environment. The first two are not defining or unique characteristics of living organisms whereas the third and fourth without exception are unique characteristics of living organisms that is not seen or not present in non-living things. In short, living organisms are self-replicating, evolving and self-regulating interactive systems capable of responding to external stimuli. Hope things are clear. You are with biologyexamsforyou.com. Send your suggestions or comments. Thank you so much for your support.